that now will make it slightly more complex. Select a name D name from emp natural join depth where emp no equals 7934. So now I've got a join in there. And my plan is a bit more complicated, but it's easy enough to do. The first operation to run is, as we say on the slide, the first operation with no child. So you start at the top and go top to bottom, left to right. The select statement, does it have a child? Yes, which is operation number one. It's below and indented by one character. The nested loop is a join. Every join operation, whether it's a nested loop join, a hash join, a merge join, every nested loop has two children. Remember, Oracle can join two row sources. So a join operation has two children, one for each row source. The two children of operation one are operations two and four. So the nested loop has two children, two and four. How do I know they are the children? Because they're below at the same level of indentation. And also I happen to know that the nested loop always has two children. Operation two itself has a child, which is operation three. And operation four has a child, which is operation five. So what's the order of execution for these operations? Well, the first one is the first one we encounter with no child. So you navigate down and ah, that's the first operation we encounter which has no child. So that is the first operation to run. We do our index unique scan of emp, looking for that value. Once that has completed, control returns to the parent, which is two, which is the lookup of the row in the table. Now, when that completes, control can return to the parent, but we can't actually do the join yet because a nested loop has another child. And that has itself a child, which is an index lookup there. Having done that index lookup, we can retrieve the row from depth. And at that point, we've got a row of emp, we've got a row of depth, we can join them and send it back to the user. So the operations are going to start in order three, two, five, four, one, zero. Or to put it another way, two and three construct the first row source, the emp table, four and five construct the second row source, the depth table. Having got the two row sources, we can join them, and having done the join, we can send the results back to the user. Now, so that's reading the order of operations. Some operations are iterative. I mentioned it before, unless a, loop, a looping structure, as the name implies, is iterative. The hash joins we saw earlier are not iterative. Some operations can run concurrently, in effect, we get a row from here, we join to a row from there, we send it back. We get the next row from there, we join to the next row from there, we send it back. Note the cardinality, the column here. That's the number of rows expected to be returned by the operation. And Oracle knows full well that PKM is a unique, that's a primary key, so it's only going to get one or zero rows. So Oracle's calculated how many rows are going to be returned. And it's correct, but this is only an estimate. What you need to note here is the join order, the join order, the join methods and the access methods. Let's try a slightly more complex example. I'll go to the HR schema. And we'll get another execution plan out here. Now, and this time I want you to tell me what the join or what the operation is. Here's my query in the HR demonstration schema. Select last name for employees, join jobs using job ID, join departments using department ID, where job title equals programmer and department name equals IT. This is a classic data warehouse query. I've got a facts table, which is employees, 
and two dimension tables, jobs and departments. So run that. So how many people, how many programmers are there in the IT departments? Well, apparently there are five. And there's my execution plan. It's not what I was expecting, but it'll do. Can you tell me what is the first operation to run, to start running? The first operation to start running. Following my rule here of previous slide, of top to bottom, left to right, the first operation with no child is the first to start. Put it in the chat, please. What do you think is my first operation to start running? Good. We've got one response already. Great. Keep them coming. I'm not going to say, not going to say whether that's right or wrong. Yes. We, yes. Want more, <laughs> we want more contributions first. There's uh, 20 of us or so in the group. Thank you, Violet. Thank you. More contributions, please. Excellent. Keep them coming. Thank you, Murat, Grace. Thank you. Keep them coming. Okay, this is looking good. And some of you are right and some of you are wrong. But you're, it's a case for those of you who are wrong, it's close but no cigar. The first one is indeed number four. Because as you navigate down, the select statement has one child. Any select statement has exactly one child. And its child is a loop. Any loop has two children. And those two children are below and indented at the same level. It's two and eight. Two has itself, is itself a loop, so it too has two children, which are three and seven, because they are indented at the same level and below. Three is also a join. This is what I wasn't expecting, by the way. Three is also a join, a Cartesian join, and any join has two children, which are four and five. And this is where some of you went slightly wrong. Because navigating down, that is the first operation that has no children. The mistake so many people make is to go down to that level, as indeed two of you did. Yes, it's lower and yes, it's indented, but that is a child of three, not a child of four. So the first operation is in fact four. So what we are doing is scanning departments, a full table scan, and note the asterisk there. We are applying a predicate. Wherever you see an asterisk, you've got to go down to the predicates here. So the predicate for 04 is the filter department name equals IT. So we are beginning to run this query by doing a full table scan of departments, picking out all the departments that are called IT. And Oracle expects to get only one. Oracle thinks there's only one IT department. Another big mistake people often make here, this tells you nothing about the size of the department's table. From this plan, you have no idea if the department's table consists of one row or one million rows. All we know is that Oracle thinks that after applying that filter, there is only one row left. So we're scanning that table. The next step, that completes, control returns to the parents, but we can't execute the parents until we've constructed the second row source, which is a full scan of jobs. So you see the difference, those of you who went for six, you actually had the join order incorrect. You were doing, we are joining departments to jobs. Whereas if we start with six, you'll be joining jobs to departments. And since it's a Cartesian join, it probably doesn't make a lot of difference. Uh, but normally the join order is the vital factor. We are joining departments to jobs and then joining the result of that to the job index and using that to probe the employees table. So in terms of the slide here, the join order is departments to jobs to employees. But that is not because of above because of the order of top to bottom. It's because of the order in which these operations start, which can be a bit different. And what you need to think about is what is the join method? Emerge join Cartesian. Um, Cartesian products are very inefficient unless you've got only one row in each of the sources. If there really is only one department called IT, 
and that scan of jobs, applying the predicates, programmer. If there really is only one job called programmer, then I can't easily join as efficient. You know, one times one equals one. But if there's an error here, if the cardinality estimates are incorrect, if we know there are in fact 50 jobs called programmer, and there are 10 departments called IT, then that Cartesian drawing will be a disaster. But in this case, the statistics are correct. Yes. You want to see filters applied deep in the plan. You don't want to see filters applied way up here. You want to see them applied down here, deep in the body of the plan. We are in fact applying a filter. Oh, that's the drawing filter. That's okay. 